And so what I did was I started to design haircuts. And one haircut I had was the old man. And I shaved my head up here just like this. I did this. Good. And I would keep the hair on the side like an old man has. <laughs> and one time I shaved my whole head and had a reverse part. So I had, I had hair up here and it kind of zigzag. So I did things to be this cool, crazy, kind of like creative kid. You know, like Criss Cross came out. I was crazy, man. But I was a crazy cool kid in school. So I look in the fucking mirror. I see this letter. I'm, I'm, I'm fucked up. And I'm like, you know what, man? No one's coming to help me. In, in this mirror, it wasn't my mom. It wasn't Principal Freeman. It wasn't my dad. It was me. Because was nobody coming back to fucking help David Goggins. That was my mindset now. Mm -hmm. And so with, with my non-spelling ass, I started getting these sticky notes wow. and writing, you're fucked up. And my mom wakes up like, what, what is wrong with you? I go, man, I'm, I have to change because mm -hmm. I, I can't stay here. I can't, I, I looked at myself in the mirror and I was defeated. I go, look, look at myself. I'm like, who am I? So I'm defeated in this mirror. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm changing. I said, mom, can we please get a tutor? So we can only afford $15 a week for a tutor. So I have four hours a month, okay. four hours a month. I had a fourth grade reading level, man. Four hours a month for six months. That's all I had. So this tutor did one thing for me, very big. Um, but basically, she saw that I was slow, very slow, and couldn't retain shit. And I think she was joking. She says, you're gonna have to write down everything a thousand times for you to remember this. I took it as, as okay, Roger that. So I literally went to the store and I bought these spiral notebooks. And I started literally writing down, let's say it's a math equation, the same fucking math equation over and over and over and over again. When it came to a paragraph comprehension, I couldn't read the fucking paragraph and then remember it. So we had like, I think 25 or 30 paragraph comprehension things. I had to write down the whole fucking thing, wow. like a whole paragraph, wow. and you, you don't have much time to take the fucking test. But that's how I learned. So how I learned the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Navy dive man, it was like a thousand pages Navy dive man. I got it a year in advance and wrote the book out probably 14 times. Like the Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Gay Lussac's Law, Dalton's Law, all these laws, but over and over, and over the whole manual. So it's not like, so now I've done it so many times, I can go back in my mind and say, okay, page 71 was Boyle's Law. And, I, and I'm looking at it right now, and I, and I remember writing it down so many times that it takes me to say, okay, I got it. And I can write it down almost verbatim how I so that's how I learn even to the day. But the work ethic I had to people think I became this guy from running. No, I became this guy from fucking studying. I had to study for hours. What might might take you an hour to learn? Take me two days. So that's where in this at the table, at the table. And my best friend Johnny remembers me like God, you're like, you just changed. Something happened. Mm -hmm. I got obsessed. I gotta figure this out, man. I'm not going anywhere. I'm starting to lie. I'm starting like so. We have a messed up foundation. I started lying about everything. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to be accepted in some society of life, some social society. And I, and I, I was like, man, this isn't the right way. I'm messed up here. I'm messed up here. I'm messed up everywhere. And so I realized the worst thing that happened to me is I lost myself. I never had myself. I never found myself. I had no self-esteem. So I knew through working out. And through learning, cause I had, it, it took a lot for me to learn also. I started finding self-esteem. Once I found that, that's when doors started opening up. I, started, I stopped caring about people, that what they thought, being judged. Wow, if I say this, if I started right now, are you going to make fun of me? I stopped caring about that. And that's when my life started really changing for me, slowly but surely. I say, my God, like, no, don't, don't look at it like, I didn't care about losing weight. I didn't care about being the fastest person. I didn't care about, I wasn't making the Olympics. I wasn't going to pros. I could barely read and write when I was in a, a junior in high school. I wasn't going anywhere. I saw working out as a way for me to build calluses on my mind. I had to callous over the victim's mentality. So I watched these movies. I, you know, I talked about Rocky last time I was on here. I always equated training to mental toughening. Like, it always looked brutal. People waking up early and doing all these things. They look, it looked horrible. I was like, wow, man, I got to start doing that. 
not to get better, bigger, and stronger, but that is what's going to build me. That looks uncomfortable. That looks brutal. And getting up early, I don't want to do that. Some of this long list of things I don't want to do. And through that, I found myself. I started, get, like, I'm like, you guys aren't doing this shit in high school. You guys aren't getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning, running over here in this golf course. So I started seeing myself very differently than the average human being. I was like, hold on a second. I have something they don't have. And that's when I started to develop these things through working out. It was this great, never-ending work ethic. And through work ethic, I developed self-esteem. Just through, through discipline, through self-discipline, through repetition, through tons of repetition of the same thing that you don't want to do. And that's, the, and that's the key thing. Through repetition of things you don't want to do, you develop mental, like, uh, like an armor for your mind. You start to armor your mind. Because your mind's like, okay, we suffer, we suffer every day. That's what we do. We do stuff that sucks every day. And that's how I started coming up. You know, I just started being very uncomfortable. And now it's like a, just a way of life. Look, dude. It, look, I believe that everybody has a gift. Every single human out there listening right now, you have a gift. The thing that you have working against you is you have all these other people now, right? 30 years ago, 20 years ago, we didn't have Instagram. We couldn't watch people and emulate them. We sort of had to learn our own little craft as we went, all right? But now we get to see what everybody's doing. And our tendency as humans is to emulate the style or the personality or the way that someone speaks or the way uh, they do their content and all these different things. But here's the thing that you don't understand is that by doing this, you are actually keeping yourself from becoming great. Because the most that you could ever be when you do these things is a watered down lesser version of what someone else is doing, all right? And how do you know that your own style and your own way of doing things uh, that you would develop little by little by little if you would just take little risks, is it gonna be greater than all of those things that you watch, okay? You cannot be great being a lesser version of what already exists. You can only be great when you execute against your own potential and do your own development. And that means getting up there and looking like a clown. And it means taking little bitty steps forward every single opportunity you get. No one comes out and is just great at business or great at athletics or great at science or great at speaking. It doesn't fucking happen, man. The first speech I ever gave, I remember it, dude. There were six fucking people there, all right? And I had a piece of paper, and I'm reading the notes, and I'm shaking. I was freaking the fuck out. There's six people. Six. That's where I started, man. So, like, this isn't a gift. It only seems like a gift because I worked so hard and so long to develop it. And you guys have to do the same thing if you want to be great. If you want to be good and you want to be effective and you want to be, um, you know, uh, not great, you just want to be good, then yeah, dude, take someone else's style, emulate everything they do. Clearly it might work, but if you want to be great, if you want to be one of the best that's ever fucking lived at what you do, you have to understand that it's about developing our own skills. It's about developing our own style. It's about developing our own swagger. It's about developing our own selves. And we don't do that when we constantly look at other people and admire them or look at them for an example or steal their shit like so popular out there right these days. So if you want to be great, guys, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the talent. It's not that everybody doesn't have the potential. Everybody has the potential. It's just they're not developing it because there's too much distraction out that we didn't have 20 years ago. So when I'm coming up, dude, I don't have people to look at. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. We didn't have all these things. We had books. And if I wanted to learn how to speak or learn how to do anything, guess what I had to do? I had to go fucking do it and suck in front of everybody. And we've lost that in society now. Everybody wants to be a lesser version of something else. And guys, I'm telling you, you can't win long term doing that. My whole life. I mean, I don't know if people believe in God or what. I don't care what you believe in. There's been this unrelenting voice in my head. We all have this voice. It's the right or wrong voice. And a lot of times that voice guides us into comfort. And my voice guided me to comfort a lot. But I had this other voice. I heard my whole life. 
Say, hey, motherfucker, what are you doing? Nah, man. We gotta go over here. We gotta go over here to, to that rock pile over in the fucking corner where nobody's at. That's, that's where victory's at.
gọi không em chuyện tình yêu đâu biết được ngày mai rồi hôm nay em bên ai nhìn em khóc trên vai thôi hãy quên đi về với em hiện tại anh còn nhớ về ngày ta còn đắm say anh vẫn nhớ về người bên anh khi ấy em đã quên rồi câu hứa yêu trọn đời em bỏ anh rồi em vui tình nhân mãi cuộc tình này đã khác rồi mình kết thúc em ơi chuyện tình này đã chết rồi còn thích chi em ơi một lần em gian dối rồi còn cố yêu không vui một lần em đã phản bội làm vết thương chưa nguôi thì anh vẫn sẽ nếm cười người khác làm em vui còn anh xin kết thúc và giữ chút đau thương thôi ở nơi xa luôn nhớ về một mối duyên tình phai đường em đi nay khác rồi còn mỗi Còn mỗi xin anh thôi